Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with an $800 editing PC build. Now this is just a little bit different from my normal gaming builds, as this is more aimed at someone who needs to be able to use a professional 3D application, maybe you're going to be doing some gameplay streaming or recording, or you might just simply need a very powerful computer to do some video editing. To give you an idea of the performance, I loaded up a copy of Adobe Premiere CS6 and then rendered out a 1 minute video at the YouTube 1080p preset, and it only needed about 1 minute and 31 seconds to complete it. Moving on, we have Cinebench, which is a more general overall benchmark. On the CPU side, we got a score of 6.87 points, and on the OpenGL benchmark test, we got a score of 51.9 frames per second. Since this is a very powerful PC, you can also do some gaming on it. So I loaded up Crisis 3, which arguably is the best looking PC game out right now, and it was able to run it at 1080p on high settings with a bit of anti-aliasing. Definitely very impressive. To kick the build off, we're going to be using an AMD FX8350. Now for a build like this, we can absolutely use as much raw power as we can get our hands on. And the 8350 definitely delivers here, with an 8 core design clocked it up to 4.2 GHz. Now heavily threaded programs such as Adobe Premiere and Sony Vegas will definitely be able to take advantage of all these cores, and that very high clock speed is definitely great right out of the box, but if you'd like you can also do some overclocking to push it even higher, all for about $195. For our motherboard, we're going to be using a Gigabyte GA970A D3. Now this gives you a lot of bang for your buck, as of course it does support our 8350 processor as well as overclocking it, but on top of that it also does support up to 32GB of RAM if you want to totally max it out, and it does have cool features that you would hope to have on a new computer like this, including USB 3.0 support, as well as 6 SATA 3 ports, so that means that you can add multiple hard drives or even multiple SSDs, all for about $85. For the graphics card, we're going to be using a 2GB EVGA GeForce GTX 650 Ti Boost. So really long name aside, this is an awesome new card that delivers a lot of the performance from the GTX 660, but at a much lower price tag. So one of the really cool things about this is of course it is an NVIDIA card, is that it does support CUDA, which is very important for programs such as the Adobe CS6 suite. It also does have 2GB of memory built in, which can definitely come in handy. And on top of all of this, it's definitely a very good gaming card as well. So if you want to go load up something like Crisis, like I showed earlier, pretty much any game out there, it'll definitely be able to handle it, all for about $170. For memory, we're going to be using 8GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR3 RAM. Now this is great stuff that I use in a lot of my builds, is not only is it reliable, but it's also pretty quick, as it's clocked at 1600 MHz. Now 8GB should be enough for most programs, however if you'd like, you can very easily upgrade this to 16GB, or even 32 if you'd like. However, if you just want to stick with the 8GB version, it's going to run you about $65. For an SSD, we're going to be using a 120GB Samsung 840 series drive. Now I am a huge fan of SSDs, especially when you're going to be doing editing or anything like that, as it makes an absolutely massive difference. So the 840 is going to be a great choice for this build, as not only is it going to be fast and reliable, Samsung makes some of the best SSDs out there, but on top of that it's not going to break the bank, coming in at about $100. For the hard drive, we're going to be using a 1TB Western Digital Caviar Green. Now the one disadvantage of using an SSD is that it typically does not have a lot of storage space, so that's where a secondary hard drive such as the Caviar Green will definitely come in handy. So with one terabyte of storage, this should be enough for a lot of video, pictures, all that kind of stuff. However, I will mention that if you do need more space, this also does come in a two as well as three terabyte versions. Of course, all those links will be in the description of this video. However, if the one terabyte version is all you need, it's gonna run you about $75. For the power supply, we're going to be using a 500 watt Corsair CX500. Now I use these in my builds all the time, and that's because not only are they cheap, but they're also very reliable, they're fairly efficient thanks to the 80 plus bronze certification, and with 500 watts of capacity that should be more than enough for the system as is, as well if you'd like to do some additional upgrades such as hard drives and all that kind of stuff in the future. So all this for about $55 makes it a perfect fit for this build. For a case, we're going to be using the Corsair Carbide 200R. Now Corsair makes some fantastic cases and the 200R is no exception. So some of the things it's got going for it is that it is a full-size ATX enclosure, which means that you're going to have lots of room for upgrades, for example additional fans, hard drives, SSDs, all that will fit into the 200R with no problem. On top of that, it's fairly well built, it does have USB 3.0 support on the front panel, and not only that, but it's also very clean and understated looking design, all for about $60. So there you have it, an awesome $800 editing PC build. 
Now, of course, prices are always changing, so I will have links to everything I mentioned in the description of this video, as well as some additional upgrades. So for example, if you'd like to add some more memory, you'd like to get a bigger hard drive, whatever, I'll have a bunch of extra links in the description for all kinds of cool upgrades for the system. If you're interested in more, feel free to check out my last build where I went over a $750 gaming PC. And if you enjoyed, definitely be sure to leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more PC builds like this. Anyway guys, I will catch you next time.